Like, girl, girl, it's hell. It's hell. <laughs> like, it's, it, it's, it's literally like hell. If you are transgender and you like cis men, it's hell. That, that's my little James Bond, like, trying to take out my glasses. Like, <laughs> So can you talk about what your style says about you? If you were to tell 12, 13-year-old Aaron that she'd be dressing like this, she would laugh in your face um, because I was so insecure then. I mean, I had no sense of my body, no sense of feeling beautiful or confident in myself as a person because I wasn't really affirmed by the world at all for who I was. There also wasn't a language for me to even pinpoint the type of person that I knew I wasn't wanted to be. And that definitely reflected in my fashion sense. I wore a lot of like baggy clothes and I didn't take care of my hair and I didn't take care of my skin and like I didn't do any of those things because I didn't know myself yet. But when I discovered modeling, that's when the question was like, who do, who do I want to be? How do I see myself and why? And I realized I wanted to be more open. I wanted to be freer in my sense of self. I had this keen sense of the fact that, like, if I enjoy fashion, why am I not here in any capacity? Why are people like me not there? Why is this limited to one representation of what it could be when I exist and I go outside my door every day? Why do those magazines look nothing like what real life looks like? Fashion forced me to confront myself and be like, why don't I think I'm beautiful? And how can I use myself as the vessel for change. What are assumptions that people make about you based on how you appear? When people look at me and see me, they often might presume that um, because I am who I am, I can't do things to the ability of other people because I am disabled and I use a wheelchair. And so my career has been about breaking down that notion of the fact that they assume that I can't do things that I very much can do if I'm accommodated for, and if other talent like me are accommodated for. I feel like people assume that I'm dumb because um, I have an accent and I speak like I'm from the Bronx and I speak like I'm from where I'm from. I am crazy. And I use that with quotes because I don't believe in that word, but I feel like people think that I'm crazy because I choose to be radically honest about my own life and experiences all the time. People have assumed that it's not worth to invest into me as a person based on their own assumptions of me. When I feel like I'm not being perceived the way I wish to be perceived, I deal with that by giving myself the love and understanding that other people can't give me. That gives me enough for me to just continue on as myself. Bloop. Thank you so much. So can you talk about what a biggest insecurity is? The single thing that affects me most in my life is my disability. Growing up being disabled was nuts. I was just kid wanting to do kid things and I was limited because of the fact that I couldn't be on the field with like my friends. I couldn't play with the Barbie dolls because my left hand couldn't do the things that would enable me to use both hands as other kids could. I was on the playground and like kids would run away and start crying. And they were just like mortified in my chair. And it made me cry and wanna just like go in a hole and never exist again. I have an aid. I have to use like assistive technology for my learning. I have to leave class earlier than the other kids so that I don't get caught in the rush of the hallway to like get downstairs to the lunch period. That's something that not a lot of people understand. You know, for a kid, it can feel so isolating. And then not only that, you know, happened to me as my reality, but then transness appeared in my life as well. Where like, I've been trans my whole life, but um, there was no language for that growing up. It was so unique as a feeling, understanding myself as like, I have so much more in common with the girls around me than I do like the boys. And I can't have the things that I want. I can't have the pink. I can't have the hair. I can't have the sweetness that I have in my family because at the time I'm being assigned as like male. I spent my entire childhood being myself, but also someone that I wasn't. It feels hard to reconcile that at times. The first time I ever really encountered my transness was when I was in like third grade. I just looked at the little girls around me and I was like in my head, like, I'm you. And then I looked down at my feet and I'm wearing like shorts and a buttoned collared like polo tops and like my head is shaved. And I didn't hate myself for this, 
but I had to look up and be like, wow, I'm not this, I'm you. Aaron Phillip is such a smart, amazing young man and such a role model for the future. And like, you almost feel this pressure to be like a smart young man. And um, I was a smart young woman. I was in a really dark place when I was like 12, 13 years old. I wanted so much more out of life for myself. And I really was aching to be seen as who I wanted to be. But I was so scared of losing everything because of people's hatred. I started to withdraw, I think, from people a little bit. But I also was aching for people. I was aching for everything. That was the time that I started like wearing black, like all black and like huge pants and like big shoes. Everything cloaked me in the way that I was feeling about myself. I literally wrote a memoir when I was 13 about my life called This Hit Can Fly. It's about ability, not disability. This is a real book that's out there in the world through like Harper Collins. I was gendered male in that book. I was so uncomfortable with that book being out in the world. I felt so detached from it because I was trans. My family came from Antigua and the Caribbean to America with very little resources or money to help me accomplish a better life because Antigua at the time did not have the resources to do with a disabled kid, you know, in their hospitals, in their hospital system. So they immigrated completely from Antigua to America for me. The book touched on a lot about my life and just like the different struggles that I had. The thing that people missed about everything is that I was a young girl. I came out of, out of school assembly. Like I had the mic. What did you say? No, like, I literally said like I'm trans or something. In front of the whole school? In front of the whole school. I didn't care at that point. Like I did, I did not care. I did not give a single shit. And um, amazing. I don't know why I didn't give a shit, but I didn't give a shit. <laughs> and I, I probably should have given a shit, but like I didn't give a shit. I felt free. I felt liberated. I felt good because someone finally heard me for the first time in my life. And I was always being asked for my opinions on what it was like to be such a smart young man who is so passionate about advocacy for disability and advocacy for my community and writing and public speaking. And I was so looked to for that, but I was so overlooked for the fact that I was a young girl. So I decided to take my autonomy for once and say, I'm transgender. Thank you, my love. Now I'm at a point with my parents that it's so different. They love me so much for being their daughter. It saddens me that that only really took place um, in my adulthood versus when I was um, a small child and really needed it more than ever. I came out to them as trans when I was in eighth grade. Casual homophobia like was existent in the house, like it existed. I was thinking to myself, if, if that's what I feel about, you know, gay people, I'm literally trans, what are they gonna do? Like, am I gonna get kicked out? Am I gonna lose my parents? Nonetheless, um, I couldn't bear to not live in my truth anymore. So um, I think I was like crying when I told them this. I was just kind of like, daddy, I have to tell you something, but if I tell you this, are you gonna love me less? And then I told them like, I'm transgender. They were really mad at me. And um, that sucked. I can't do anything to like get my childhood back. Like I can't, like it's over. Maybe I haven't tapped into the pain. I kind of feel like I don't know what to do with it. I have to move forward with it. Cause I can't do anything but be me today. I was completely bedridden in my freshman year of high school, upstate in a rehabilitation center for physical impairments and, you know, disabilities. I couldn't eat, I couldn't move, I couldn't do anything. It was the most incapacitated I'd, I'd ever been in my entire life. And um, it's the most painful experience I ever, I ever had to go through. And during that time, fashion became my escape and my outlet for having some kind of happiness during that time. I feel like I'm beautiful enough to be a model, to inhabit the space of being a model. I basically provoked the public and eventually the, the fashion industry into taking a chance on a model like myself because I said, honestly, when I'm scattered and discovered, it's over for all of y'all. That's what I literally said in my tweet. I don't know where I got that from, but I just, you know, I, I knew I had to be provocative. 
And I used the power of, of being provocative and being myself to ignite a change. It was a school night that I made this tweet. I woke up and why is it out like 200,000 retweets and likes and 900 replies. And it's all people being like, I want to see this. I want to see this. I love this. I love, I love this kid. I want to see that. I, I, I was so shocked. I'm like, oh my God, it worked. Modeling gave me something that I never had before. Modeling gave me the autonomy to really have people see me and to be perceived on a wide scale as exactly the person that I am. I feel bad that I was the first person that ever got to accomplish a lot of things that I had because there have been other talents that have been working so hard that haven't gotten to do anything that they love or want to do because of ableism. I don't feel good about being the first about things. I feel like it should have happened ages ago. Oh, where did my sock go? When do you feel the most vulnerable? When I feel the, the most vulnerable is when I'm outside of my wheelchair. If I'm out of my chair to do anything, I need to help, I need assistance physically to like be lifted, to be carried, to do anything I would have to do outside of my wheelchair. If you're a person in my life and you're around me and you're able-bodied, I'm gonna have to be vulnerable with you in some kind of, in some kind of way that you as an able-bodied person wouldn't ever have to really think about. I have to ask people to get me like a glass of water. I have to ask people to like help me get my, you know, my bag or like my things. Like other people don't really have to do that. I mean, they can do that in passing, but they don't have to like do that as like a need. Growing up as a kid in school, um, I was very insecure about having to use the bathroom. I would never number two at school because I need someone to help me with that. I would always save it from when I went home with my father or my mother and then even doing number one, I felt annoying. I'm 22 today and um, I won't use the restroom at public places unless I'm with someone I trust very much. I've tried to overcome feeling burdensome as a disabled person, something I, I can't control, but it's harder. It's, it, it's easier said than done. I like men. I like cis head men. If you told me that it would have been like this child, Child. <laughs> and I mean that as in like, girl, like girl, girl. It's hell, it's hell. <laughs> like it's, it, it's, it's literally like hell. If you are transgender and you like cis men, it's hell. I approach life and dating with like honesty and connection and love and care and respect. And the same thing happens. I'm ignored, I'm talked down to, I'm misunderstood, I'm mistreated. You are told that you are an object. You're told that you're not worth it. You're told that you're only meant for someone's satisfaction sexually. Men are not evil, right? So I think men look at me and assume that they can't have anything with me because they're afraid of what me being transsexual would potentially bring into their life if people knew. <laughs> okay, okay here we are. Ooh, right, 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 right. I'm gonna take my seatbelt too. Just put it over there. When do you feel the most beautiful? When I feel the most beautiful is lately, to be honest. The love that the world doesn't give to me has always lived inside of me. Like, I am love and I am beauty, and I am power, and I am all these things. And when I realized this, it was like, oh wow. So, um, wow. I'm at this point where like, I have this mirror in my room, and like, I look at myself all the time, and I'm just like, oh my god, I'm so cute. And then I listen to like, my, my little music on my speaker, and I'm just like, I'm so cute, I'm so lit, I'm so popping. Cause it's true, I am. Got it, got it, got it. Great. Okay. I'm in my underwear. Your underwear is really cute. You pulled it off. I had to look cute for y'all, you know? Like, you yeah, like, la 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 la. You look really cute. La la la. Thank you. Um, 
Why in your body? Why in your skin? Why in your journey? Why is it a good place to be? So at the point of my life that I'm in with my skin, my body, my journey, my life, my soul, my energy, um, honestly, like with me personally, I'm very happy with myself. I feel like I'm constantly overcoming, but I have overcame a lot of adversity in my life. I've made myself beautiful internally and externally. And with that, I feel at peace with myself a little bit more than, than I ever have because I'm not perfect with myself yet, but what I'm able to say is that like, I truly am beautiful and lovely and wonderful. I represent people that have been historically um, marginalized and pushed to the side in every single way. I want to be the vessel and I want to be poured into and I want to pour into people and I want to pour into life and I want to change things for the better. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs>